Okay, so in this video we want to introduce um, something called the chain rule. And the chain rule is used for differentiating composite functions. Um, and we actually don't learn about composite functions in Year 11. You'll meet those officially in Year 12. But it's really important that you're able to identify when you have a composite function so you know when you might use the chain rule. Now, because we're only dealing with differentiating um, polynomial and power functions, um, identifying when the chain rule is needed is a bit more obvious here than it will be a bit later on next year. Um, but we want to be able to talk about that idea first. So the whole um, idea here is that if we wanted to differentiate something like this, y equals x cubed plus 2 all squared, we know that we can't differentiate that in that form because it's essentially a product of two functions. It's a product of x cubed plus 2 times x cubed plus 2. And so we know we only we must have only addition and subtraction of terms before we can differentiate. And so we would need to expand that out and get x to the 6 plus, um, what are we going to have, 4x cubed plus 4. Okay. And then differentiate. Now the problem would be is what if though it is x cubed plus 2 to the power of 6? Okay, now all of a sudden, you know, that expansion gets a bit more tedious. It's possible, but it's tedious. So what we want to look at is how we could differentiate expressions of this kind of form without needing to expand them. And that's where the chain rule comes in. So as I said, the chain rule is um, what we use to differentiate something called composite functions. And that is when we have one function substituted into another function. So for example, in the case of y equals x cubed plus 2 all to the power of 6, we can think about that as x cubed plus 2 has been substituted in to x to the power of 6. It's a composition of two functions. So if, f of it, if g of x is x cubed plus 2 and f of x is x to the power of 6, then what we're working out here is f of g of x. So substituting g of x in to f of x. So wherever there's an x in f of x, we replace it with g of x, which in this case is um, x cubed plus 2. So it becomes x cubed plus 2 substituted into f of x, so all of that to the power of 6. So we need to be able to recognise this composite function in order to recognise that the chain rule is needed. So, and what we're going to need to be able to do also in order to execute the chain rule is to be able to identify what I refer to as the inside and the outside function. So what has been substituted in to what other function, okay? So for example here, let's work through these. So if we have x plus 1 all to the power of 8, the inside function is x plus 1. Okay, y equals x plus 1. And we've substituted that into x to the power of 8. Okay, so if we think about this as being, if we say that g of x is x plus 1, f of x is x to the power of 8, then what we've got here is f of g of x is essentially what we're saying. We've taken um, g and we've subbed it into f to get x plus 1 to the power of 8. All right, so um, if our function is 2 times x squared minus 4 all to the power of 6, we would think about the inside function as being x squared minus 4, and we've subbed that into 2x to the power of 6. Okay, so we've replaced all the x's in this with x squared minus 4. Okay, in this one, we would think about our inside function as being 4x plus 3, and that has been substituted into 1 on x, which is x to the negative 1. Okay, so we've subbed that in, in place of x. Okay, and similarly in the last one, our inside function is x squared plus 1, and we've substituted that into um, 3 on x to the power of 4, which is 3x to the negative 4. So we've taken x squared plus 1, and we've subbed it in place of x in here. So by being able to identify the function in this way and break it up in this way, what we now have are two sets of functions which we can differentiate. Okay, So we started with something which we can't differentiate without expanding or simplifying in some way because we've got product or division of two functions. Um, potentially, sorry, no, more likely we've got repeated function. But by breaking it up into its inside and its outside function, separately those things can be differentiated. And that's what's key. Okay. All right. So 
technically the chain rule in Leibniz notation is this. If we let u be equal to the inside function, then dy dx will be equal to dy du times du dx. Now this is just simple fraction work. Okay, this is me telling you that three quarters is going to be the same as three over something times something over four, as long as whatever I put here and here is the same. Okay, and that's all we've done here. So there's nothing magical about the chain rule. We're saying that dy dx is going to be the same as dy over something times something over dx, as long as those two things are the same. So if we make that du, then we can, um, then we can get dy dx. All right, so that's all that it is. So as I said, the key is about letting u be equal to the inside function. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So in this case, let's let u equal 2x cubed plus 1. And when we do that, that means now that y is equal to u to the power of 9. Okay, so if I differentiate each of these separate expressions, so the derivative of it's u in terms of x, so it's going to be du dx is going to be 6x squared. This derivative is called dy du, derivative of y with respect to u, and that's 9u to the power of 8. And so now we go to our chain rule, we know that dy dx, which is ultimately what we're trying to find, the derivative of that, okay, is going to be equal to dy du times du dx. And we know that dy du is 9u to the power of 8, multiplied by du dx, which is 6x squared. Now, our original equation didn't have u in it. So let's let's get rid of u, okay? So it's 9 times 2x cubed plus 1 to the power of 8, multiplied by 6x squared. And then obviously we can combine together the 9 and the 6x squared, so we get 54x squared times 2x cubed plus 1 to the power of 8. Okay, let's have a think about, about part B. Again, the first step is to let u be equal to your inside function, which in this case is x minus 6x squared. And when we let u equal that, we then get y in terms of u. So y is 2 times u to the power of 6. We can differentiate each of these separately. So derivative of u with respect to x is going to be 1 minus 12x. And the derivative of y with respect to u is going to be 12u to the power of 5. And then we can put them together because we know that dy dx is dy du multiplied by du dx. And dy du is 12u to the power of 5 multiplied by du dx. Now careful here, if I write 1 minus 12x it's not correct. Order of operations tells me that would only multiply by 1 and then subtract 12x, so I need a bracket there. So we're multiplying by all of that. Okay, and then we don't want u in our original uh, answer because we introduced u, so let's replace u. u is x minus 6x squared. We've got that to the power of 5, and then we have 1 times 1 minus 12x. And so there is our derivative with respect to x, derivative of y with respect to x. Now, I don't use this process. This is what's happening, and until you get familiar and comfortable with it, I'm happy for you to start off by letting u equal the inside function, find dy, du dx and dy du, and then put them back together. But I want to try and, you to try and see how we could do this in, really we could write these answers down in one or two steps, okay? And ideally that's the place that we want to be able to get to. So the key thing I want us to see here is, let's just go back and look at these two. So what I would say to you is that there's, there's two parts to this answer, essentially. There's this part here and there's this part here, okay? The first part, let me use a different color so I can be clear which one I'm talking about. The first part, the purple part, is essentially just forget that there's something else inside the fun original function. You've got something to the power of 9. When you differentiate that, it'll be 9 times that something to the power of 8. That's essentially what the purple thing is. Deriv I call that derivative of the outside function. So you sort of cover up the inside. Imagine you've got, you just think about it as you've got a blob to the power of 9. The derivative of that will be 9 times the blob to the power of 8. And that's what we've got in the purple thing. And then the second part of the function is what we get when we differentiate the inside function. Okay, so I like to think of it as sort of, it's the derivative of the outside function multiplied by the derivative of the inside function. Um, it's a bit loose, that language, but that's sort of what you're doing. Same thing here. You think about, okay, 
you've got two bits in your answer. It is, oops, sorry, this purple bit and then times by this orange bit. The purple bit is you sort of just imagine covering up the inside function. I've got two times something to the power of six. The derivative of that is 12 times something to the power of five. Okay, that's the purple bit. And then we multiply that by the orange bit, which is the derivative of the inside. Okay. So if we think about the chain rule in function notation, it's going to be like this. Okay, If our original function is a composite function, f of g of x, then we do f dash of g of x. So we sort of forget, we pretend there's no, sorry, we pretend there's, you know, it's just f of something and the derivative of that is f dash something. Okay, And then we multiply by derivative of the inside. Okay, so if you can think through it that way, you can actually get to the answer much more efficiently. So if I think through this in the same way, sort of I've got a chain rule, my inside function is x squared plus 2x, let me start by covering that up. So my derivative is going to be, I've got something to the power of 8, so it's going to be 8 times that something to the power of 7, okay, and that something is x squared plus 2x, and then we multiply by the derivative of the something, the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of the inside is 2x plus 2. Now, at this point, my answer is not correct. And you, this is where you need to be really careful. This is the place you'll make mistakes. You must have a bracket around this. Without the bracket, it says something different. It says that you do 8 times uh, x squared plus 2x to the power of 7 multiplied by 2x, and then you add on 2, which is not what we want to do. We want to multiply by 2x plus 2. Okay, then you can do certain levels of tidying up. In this case, with the common factor of 2 in this bracket, I'd probably take that common factor of 2 out and put it together with the 8. So I'm going to have 16 times x squared plus 2x to the power of 7, and then we've just got x plus 1 here because we took out the 2. But there's nothing wrong with the first answer, um, but generally speaking, um, taking out common factors can be sort of helpful down the track, but I wouldn't worry. You, you've answered it um, You've, you've done what the question asked, which was to differentiate with respect to x. Um, okay, so let's think about b. So we've got 3 times something ugly all to the power of 22. So let's cover up that inside function. 3 times something to the power of 22. So we can do that. Oops. So that's going to be 66 times that something to the power of 21. Okay, and that something is x squared plus 2x to the half minus 13. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of that, which is 2x plus x to the negative half. And there's our chain rule. Now again, you could write the thirds back in, you could, um, but you certainly wouldn't be expanding it, expected to expand out your final answer. Your final answer has got a power of 21. That's the whole reason we didn't expand out the original answer with the power of 22. Um, you're not going to get um, an answer that's likely to be significantly more easily expanded. So it's perfectly fine to leave it factorised. Um, so you've answered the question at that point. Okay, part C. Now this is a bit less obvious that it's a chain rule. So you need to sort of see these fractions as being, remember this is 9 times x plus 5 to the power of negative 1. Okay, so if we think about covering up our inside function, so you've got dy dx, so the derivative of the outside, so you've got 9 times something to the power of negative 1, so that will be negative 9 times the something to the power of negative 2. Okay, and that something is, oops, sorry, x plus 5. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside, so the derivative of x plus 5, which is just 1 in this case. So it's just going to be negative 9 times x plus 5 to the negative 2, or you might choose to write that back as a fraction, negative 9 over x plus 5 all squared. As I said, both of these answers are correct. The point is, though, is you must be able to, to understand that they're the same thing and be able to move between those two versions fluidly. The answer in the back of the book might say the second option. You need to be able to recognise that your answer is the same as that and still correct. Okay? Um, you might be asked to give your answer in a particular form in a test or an exam, so you need to be able to, to do that algebra. And this is where your um, work with powers, fractional negative, etc., um, will hinder your progress in this topic if you're not very strong in that area. Okay, um, part D, we've got square root of something. So if we think about that as being x cubed minus 5x squared all to the power of a half, okay? We can see why the chamber would be necessary. 
there's our inside function. So we've got something to the power of a half. So when we differentiate something to the power of a half, we get half times that something to the power of negative half. Okay, and that something is, sorry, and that something is x cubed minus 5x squared. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of x cubed minus 5x squared, which is 3x squared minus 10x. Okay. Again, a few things we could do here. We could take out the common factor of x if we want. Um, there's no numerical common factor. We've got a power of negative half, so we could write that underneath. Um, so we could write this as 3x squared minus 10x all over. 2 times the square root of x cubed minus 5x squared. Okay. As I said, you could factor out the x. Um, there's no numeric common factors, so the fraction won't simplify any further. So um, there's nothing more to do. So again, either of those um, expressions is fine. Okay, part E, we've got x plus 2 on x to the power of negative 4. Okay, let's just have everything in a form that can be differentiated before we start. So this is x plus 2x to the negative half to the power of negative 4. Okay, cover up my inside function. I've got something to the power of negative 4. The derivative of that is going to be negative 4 times that something to the power of negative 5. Okay, and that is x plus 2 on x or 2x to the negative 1. And then we need to multiply by the derivative of the inside. So the derivative of this which is derivative of x is 1, and then we're going to have minus 2x to the minus 2. Okay, So we're going to have negative 4x plus 2 on x to the negative 5, and then we've got that times 1 minus, that's 2 on x squared. Again, you've got a negative power here, so you could write it as a fraction, but then you'd have fractions in fractions, um, so I'd probably leave it written in this way at this point. Okay, but again, it's not so much about the form of your answer as being able to um, successfully differentiate. Again, the brackets around the derivative are what's important. Leaving those out will make will mean that you have an answer that's not correct. Okay. All right. So work today practicing the chain rule. If you want to start out by letting u uh, equal the in, um, the inside function and then finding your two separate derivatives and then putting them back together to find your chain rule, fine. Um, but if you can try to work towards getting yourself to being able to just find the derivative straight away without needing to introduce you, um, then that would be a, a good step forward, I think. So a mixture of questions from 20A and 20B.